Hey guys, what's going on? Chrisarel here. In the last episode, we changed our script to use Instantiate whenever we add new items to the inventory. This allows us to treat each item as its own unique object in memory, which makes total sense for our equipment. And now we want to implement item stacking. This would mean that item slots need a list to hold all the instances of the items that are stacked on that slot. If we were to allow equipment to be stackable, that would be a pretty good solution. But let's say we allow equipment to have enchantments or gems later down the line. If we have two identical pieces of gear, but one has an enchantment and the other doesn't, that would be a pretty awkward situation to deal with if they could stack. On the other hand, if we have non-unique items like crafting materials, for example a metal plate, every single metal plate will always be equal to every other metal plate, so they can safely be stacked. And at the same time, since they're all the same, we don't really need a unique instance for each. That seems like a big waste of memory. So firstly, with the goal of saving memory, let's do the following changes. In the item class, we'll add two new methods, getCopy and destroy. They are both public and virtual, with getCopy returning an item and destroy returning void. In this class, the getCopy method will just return this, which means it will return the reference to the object itself and destroy won't do anything. In the equipable item class, we will override both of these methods. In the getCopy method, we will return a new instance of this item, so we basically make a copy first and then we return that, and in the destroy method, we will just call unity's destroy function on the object in question. So now we need to go and replace all calls to instantiate with a call to the getCopy method, and similarly, we need to replace all calls of the destroy method with a call to the new destroy method. We have a call to instantiate in the inventory class, a call to destroy and another to instantiate in the crafting recipe class, and another call to instantiate in the item chest class. So I hope it has become clear why we are making these getCopy and destroy methods. For equipable items, whenever we call getCopy, we will instantiate a new copy of that item, and then when we call destroy, we will destroy the object in question. While for the item class, we are assuming we are using this class for items that are not unique, so every time we call getCopy, we don't really need to instantiate a new object, we'll just return a reference to the original one. And in the destroy method, we don't need to do anything in that case. And now we can start implementing item stacking, knowing that we won't be using tons of memory unnecessarily. In the item class, we'll need to add a new public int maximum stacks variable. We'll make it equal to 1 by default. And we can also add the range attribute to limit the values between 1 and, let's say, 999. Feel free to change this for your use however you want. In the item slot class, we'll need to add a new serialize field variable. This will hold the text object that is going to display the number of stacks we have on that slot. Then we'll need to add a new public property, amount. This is going to be the actual number of items that we are holding in this slot. And in here, we will need to enable or disable the amount text object, depending on certain conditions, and also update that text object to have the correct amount. So we are only going to enable the amount text if the slot actually has an item, meaning that the item is not null, if that item is stackable, meaning its maximum stacks is larger than one, and we already have in this slot more than one item of that type. Otherwise, the amount text will be hidden. We can also add to the unvalidate method code to search for the amount text object by using get component in children. Now we can go into our scene and add a new text object as a child of each item slot. Luckily, we can do this rather fast by selecting multiple objects at once. 
As for the settings on each text object, I'll just leave that on the screen for a while, feel free to copy. Next, we need to go into the Inventory class and change addItem and both removeItem methods to take stacking into account. In the addItem method, to allow stacking in a slot that isn't empty, we'll need to check if the ID of the item in the slot is the same as the ID of the item we are trying to add, and besides that, we'll need to check if the items in that slot still haven't reached the maximum number of stacks allowed by that item. And whenever we add an item to this slot, we're going to increase the amount. For both remove methods, instead of outright setting the item to null, we are first going to decrease the amount by 1, and only if the amount reaches 0, will we set the item to null, emptying that slot. Also in the inventory class, we also need to change the set starting items method to update the amount variables. This way we'll make sure that the text objects are enabled or disabled properly as needed. In the character script, inside the drop method, down here, where we are swapping the items, besides just swapping the items, we will also need to swap their amounts. We'll need a new temporary variable that can hold the amount for the dragged item, and then we'll set the dragged item slot amount to the amount of the drop item slot, and we'll set the drop item slot amount to the dragged item amount. Finally, let's test out our changes by using the 3D interaction scene and adding a bunch of items to our inventory. First we'll need to create a new item, this time it's going to be just a regular plain item and not equipable. We'll call it gold coin. And we'll use the coin sprite for its icon. And for maximum stacks, I'm going to set it to 10. Next up, I'm going to duplicate the item chest in the scene, and I'm going to position it near the original chest. And here I'm going to change the item from the chest armor to the gold coin. The only thing left to do here, in order to be able to test this out properly, is change the item chest to be able to hold more than one item. Because right now, as soon as we pick up one gold coin, the chest will be empty and we won't be able to test the stacking. So let's go into the item chest script. We'll need a new serialized field variable, int amount, that is going to have a default value of 1. And this is going to hold exactly how many items there are in this chest. We're putting it a default value of 1 so that we don't accidentally have chests that have 0 items. Down here in the update method, Instead of simply adding the item and then setting is empty to true right away, we are first going to decrease the amount by 1, and only if the amount is equal to 0 are we going to set is empty to true and change the color. Besides that, we should also take into account the return value of the addItem method, which honestly we should have been doing since the start, but Unfortunately, bugs happen, and we'll only decrease the amount and empty the chest potentially if we are able to actually add the item to the inventory. Besides that, we should be careful not to create infinite copies of an item that we are not able to add to the inventory, otherwise, we are going to fill up our memory with useless objects. So, let's just store a copy of the item that we create, and if the add is not successful, we will immediately destroy it. Lastly, we need to increase the number of gold coins in our second item chest, let's say 1000. And finally, we can test this out in the scene by pressing play. And voila! We have item stacking working! Woohoo! I hope you have enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you in the next one.